Good morning, friends. Welcome to Celebration Worship at Lake Harbor United Methodist Church on this beautiful Mother's Day Sunday. Whether you are in this space or you're live streaming through, broad, uh, through Facebook with us, uh, so glad to uh, spend this time with you. Um, I do want to extend a happy Mother's Day um, to all mothers or all motherly people uh, with us. Uh, I hope you have a blessed day. Um, we uh, want to point out that uh, we lit the Christ candle as a reminder for us that we are worshiping with uh, God, our Creator, His Son, uh, Jesus Christ, um, and with the Holy Spirit who sustains us. We've also lit the social justice candle uh, for this month. Uh, for the month of May this year, we're um, want to be particularly attentive to uh, issues of addiction, um, how those uh, affect those uh, who suffer with addiction or love those with addiction, whether that addiction is uh, spending or tobacco or alcohol or narcotics, pornography or intimacy or food. What the addiction is is uh, a way of trying to find that a good thing. And um, it's a, a painful, painful struggle, and so we just encourage us to be careful and mindful uh, this month as we work through that. Um, and uh, we'd like to continue worship this morning um, uh, with uh, this scripture. Uh, it's the Psalm 98, and uh, I encourage you to open your ears to these words. Uh, be mindful that immediately after this, we're going to be singing it celebratorily. celebratorily. Um, so listen to the instruction from uh, the writer of Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord. He has done wonderful things. By the power of his right hand and his holy arm, he has saved his people. The Lord has made known his power to save he has shown the nations what he does, what is right. He has shown his faithful love to the people of Israel. People from one end of the earth to the other have seen that our God has saved us. Shout for joy to the Lord, everyone on earth. Burst into joyful songs and make music. Make music to the Lord with the heart. Sing and make music with the heart. Blow the trumpets, give a blast on the ram's horn, shout for joy to the Lord, he is the king. Let the ocean and everything in it roar. Let the world and all who live in it shout. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together with joy. Let them sing to the Lord, because he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the nations of the world in keeping with what is right and fair. Please stand as you're comfortable and join us in singing praises to our God. Thank <laughs> you. 
the psalm that just uh, read calls us to sing a new song to God. We're called to do something new, to bring old patterns, to see with new eyes, to hear with new ears, and even love with hearts that have been taken over by God's grace. So today we continue to live out that call to joy because of God's power to overcome death and despair. We can trust in God's power to help us break the molds that keep us from moving forward in faith. We can trust in the Holy Spirit breaking through, and as we look around at the beauty of creation, it's a great image of how we're called to respond to God's love. I don't know if you noticed as you came in this morning, but um, nature made its own little pink petal carpet for us to come in to, so it was beautiful. It's a great image of how we're called to respond to God's love, to break forth with songs of joy, and uh, looking around at creation, breaking forth into praise of our awesome God, loving Christ, and the power of the Spirit. So it is good to be gathered together this morning. I want to offer just a couple of announcements. Uh, first, an encouragement and invitation for you to send in your God moments um, to uh, our office, office at Lake Harvey God Methodist Church. Uh, you can do that. You can also send your prayer request in that way. And um, we invite you to do that. We have an active prayer team here at Lake Harbor. And uh, be assured that when you send those in, those are being lifted in prayer by lots of people. Uh, both of those are available printed and online. We encourage you to take on that spiritual discipline. Our newsletter is also available. Uh, again, printed copies are here. We have it online as well. Lots of good information. And so then some invitations uh, for this week. First, tomorrow night, uh, we have our uh, worship brainstorming, our next one for this next series. We're going to be looking at uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, you'll see uh, an invitation there, words to live by for us. Uh, so the Ten Commandments will lead us this summer in our worship. So tomorrow night, if you want to be part of that planning, uh, we encourage you to come. It will be great. We have we share a meal at 6, and then we start our work at 7. So... Uh, please keep that in mind for tomorrow. We have Bible studies this week, Tuesday morning and evening, and Saturday morning as well. Uh, youth groups continue to meet on Wednesday, and our choir will as well. And then this Friday, we have our uh, high school youth mission team hosting a dinner and a basket option to raise funds for their trip this summer. Uh, Six o'clock Friday night here at church. Uh, next Sunday, uh, or two weeks from, from this Sunday, is May 28th, which is Pentecost. Also, Memorial Day weekend, we'll have one service on Sunday, and uh, we have an opportunity for anybody who wants to dance. So, we have uh, ribbon dancers. We need some ribbon dancers. So, um, uh, Tim Gates is putting together a special, uh, special offering for that, uh, offering a dance for that Sunday. And so, next week, next Sunday, the 21st, between our worship services, we'll be sharing that and, and gathering people. So, keep that in mind. Uh, and that'll be offered on the 28th. So um, you're invited to be part of that. Uh, next Sunday, the 21st, is also when we'll celebrate graduation Sunday. So uh, if you have a loved one that you want to look at, we, uh, it's important for us to, to offer prayers and to support uh, that milestone for lots of people, whether it's graduation from high school or college or uh, a certificate program. Uh, we, we love to celebrate all those things. So keep that in mind for next Sunday. And though it might seem early, Vacation Bible School is coming the end of June, June 26th to the 29th. Um, share that with people that you know and invite people to, to join us for that. It's always a wonderful time. Uh, as Eric mentioned, our social justice issue for May uh, is an action, again, uh, raising our awareness, thinking about the resources that we have in our community. And I, every time I drive um, to, to work here at the office, I pass by the, the house on the corner of Henry and Kyle, and I'm grateful for the resource that it offers so many in our community uh, who struggle with addiction for their families. So uh, that's one of many resources, but we're grateful for that. Our noisy offering for this month is for needs in our local schools, and so uh, we're invited to, to participate in that. Uh, we're grateful for those connections that we have and the ways that we can um, we can reach out and support what's needed in our local schools for the things that may not uh, always be covered or kids, the things that kids need uh, when they come to school. But it's good to be gathered. I want to uh, invite the kids to come forward if they want to make their way to the front here. Uh, as they do, just a couple of um, Thanksgivings. Uh, a word of thanks for those who served Thank you Promise this week, uh, who led Bible study, who served as we hosted a memorial service. 
uh, here on a Wednesday, mostly like youth group Wednesday night. There are lots of ways that people offer their time and their talent and their treasure, and I'm grateful for that. I also want to lift up uh, Jeff Barry and his family as they'll be starting a new adventure, and he'll step out of the role of our congregational care coordinator. And we're grateful for his dedication to that ministry, and we're celebrating uh, with some coffee time today. So I'm um, grateful for that, and I'm thankful that we can um, celebrate the gifts with one another. All right, my friends. Here we go. Ready? Come three. Ready to say good morning? Here we go. All right. One, two, three. Good morning. Started this series about a month ago that we had umbrellas all over the sanctuary. Yeah, lots of them. Hmm. Perfect. I love that idea. This is another one that somebody found from long ago. It's making us, I know. We didn't hang it up because it's a little hard to hang up on the button. I wanted to show you today. So, um, I want, yeah, I know the candles are really close. Um, so, I wanted to tell you a couple things about umbrellas because I did a little research and found this out and I thought, found it very interesting. So, what do we use umbrellas for usually? The rain, the sun. The sun is actually the first reason that people had umbrellas, to block the sun. So, umbrellas have been around for four, at least 4,000 years, probably longer, but 4,000 years. Wouldn't bump them very well, but at least 4,000 years. At first, they were used mainly in hot countries to keep for safety, right? Now, how many of you go to the beach and use the beach umbrella? I do. Yeah. I usually have an umbrella at the beach because I love the warmth, but I don't love the lack of sun. Yeah. Hmm. Go in the water. Umbrellas sometimes were made from wood and paper. Some were made from feathers. Yeah. They put them together to the black of sun. So, and a lot of times, a long time ago, they, people would pull umbrellas over kings right, to protect them from the sun. Sometimes umbrellas were really fancy. They were made from silk, made castles, um, and sometimes a flower on the top. So, some are they're kind of fancy, some of them are just a one color. Yeah. And then later on, umbrellas were oil. They would put oil on them as a way to make them waterproof. And then people in colder countries would use umbrellas to protect them from rain. So that's usually what we, that's usually what I think about with an umbrella like this, is to protect us from rain. So, but I want you to think about, um, we're talking about dancing. Sometimes we dance in the rain, right? Uh, we can dance even in the rain when things aren't so great. Umbrella that I have, or the umbrella that you have. How many of you have a lot of umbrellas at home? More than one. Anybody keep one in your car? Anybody ever forgot your umbrella? Yeah. Another way we can think about it is kind of like God's love that covers us. All right. So next time you use your umbrella, whether it's to block the sun or to block the rain, I want you to think about how God's love always covers us, no matter what. Um, no matter if things are going great, or no matter if they're kind of not so great. I've, I've had a 
some things go great this week and some things not so great. Anybody? Anybody had that kind of week? Yeah. No matter what, that's why we have that word joy up here. Because joy is something that God gives us. That joy of knowing that God is always with us, that God's love is always with us, just like this umbrella covers us. God's love is always with us. And we can trust in that. So, um, when we, think, when we look at our umbrellas here, the same for when we look at the ones that we have at home, um, remember that God's love is always there covering us. I think there is a difference between joy and happiness. Great question. Yeah. Joy is it's kind of in us, isn't it? It's with us all the time. Joy looks really excited. Sometimes it just looks kind of peaceful and calm. I think you're actually right. That's a great point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Can we pray together this morning? And thank you that your love covers us always, that it's always with us, that we can trust in it to be with us always, no matter if we're feeling great or if we're uh, struggling, if we're sad or mad or uh, anything else that we're feeling. We trust that you're always with us and we're grateful for that. Help us to share that um, with others, to share the fact that you love us, you're always with us, and that you're always, um, always there, no matter what. And as we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Thank you shared this morning the God moment that I think I've decided to call the God moment that wasn't. So, first of all, let me just start by saying that um, things uh, of low probability rarely happen to me. So, for example, I'm 50 years old. I've been periodically, not regularly, periodically buying gym. Well, first of all, I've never won bingo. All right? Never. I never got the screen bingo. But, like, so I'm 18 years old, or I've been 18, 18 years old, um, 32 years ago, and I bought, uh, like, lottery tickets periodically, scratch off tickets at Powerball, like, when it's worth a billion dollars, you're like, hey, it's worth a couple of bucks just to think about what could happen. You might be surprised to know I've never won. Um, and so this uh, God moment that didn't happen, Occurred a couple of weeks ago, it's Saturday morning. My lovely wife and I um, had uh, a meeting to go to at 8 30 in the morning, and uh, none of the teenagers had to be at school, so we didn't have like looking for people to get in the car. So we got to go like in the adult piece and get ourselves ready to go out to the car. And uh, by getting in the car, I fired the car. right behind the booth in our two-car wide driveway um, last night when we got the car to leave. It's no big deal. There's room so that we can, like, get the new car out and around. So I said, hey, dude, my car won't start. And I'm like, kind of, like, fussing the car off. And now I get back to my meeting and figure out why the car won't start. And I start seeing power bills in my head. And I'm like, why don't we fly? Um, and so we get in the movie car, and I'm like, you know, it's maybe a couple of All right, so if there are any statisticians here, what is the likelihood that both cars won't start on the same day at the same time? 
That's all I did. You can do the math and talk to me afterwards. I really like that. And so I'm sitting there, sitting around, like, stupid, you know, you want to go to that stupid meeting. You're going to be sitting there, you're going to be sitting there, you're going to be sitting there. And he goes, well, I'm going to get back to my house. Because my key fob doesn't work. Because, you know, why would I use the battery in my key fob? It's really fun. Julie runs to the house and puts in the battery in her key fob and she comes out. She works hard, she works so hard. And she pulls around and we go to our meeting and we go to the cafeteria. And we come back from our meeting an hour or so later. And I'm like, trying to find chores to do. Like, hey, I'll wash these six dishes so I don't have to go put food up in the car. <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, I don't know what else to do with it. I guess I'll just look at it. Maybe you'll see your cell phone. Um, so I go out and I put the book in the car and I look at it and I wiggle some wires and I'm like, see, I'm going to put this stupid battery out and take it to the floor and see if it's got to be somewhere. And I wiggle it to the floor. And I put it back into it. I'm going to try to use that connection on the thing that goes to the battery and put it in my car and start right now. So great, I don't need to win the lottery. That didn't cost me anything. And so I spent a lot of time. That's a really weird thing to happen. And I spent a lot of time, like more time than I needed to, thinking about what I could do. And then I started to know that God's looking over us all the time. That God loves us every minute. He knows every hair on our head. I don't know that. Some magical ability to loosen wires on batteries or kill batteries and key files. But he cares about us and he loves us every minute. And so the God moment that wasn't is what did we avoid by being 15 minutes late? I don't know. And how many times? Sheltering you with your umbrella. And I have no idea how to do it. I'm so thankful for it. I'm going to take a few minutes um, to consider the uh, God moments uh, that others can share. I can encourage you to do the same. Uh, please uh, email uh, your God moments to uh, office at lakeharborumc.org. Or if you're more conventional, there are little um, colored slips of paper on the back table where we can really write down your bad moments. So if we can be shared and encouraged by one another, that's good. Dear Heavenly Mother, we were stirred awake this morning by the cool air like your kiss on our forehead. And the song of the robins who are also watching over their children. Their song is our reminder, is your reminder to us of the gift that we have in this day. Thank you for today. 
for your patience and your persistence. When we wrap the blanket tighter against the cool spring air, let's sing our best to your song. Loving Mother, you are with us. With us in our joy and community. With us in our fatigue and loneliness. Your song brings us comfort until we know the meaning. Our faith grows as we learn the lyrics. We celebrate you in our dance. And salvation is offered as we share with others. Be with us in the music and guide us to grow in your ways. We share these words knowing that your hand is in our hearts. To uh, continue our time of worship uh, in offering, I would encourage you to uh, uh, offer yourselves in whatever way you can this morning. Um, uh, whether that means in prayer or in praise or in music, there are uh, plates and buckets in the back of the sanctuary if you're committed to a financial gift to the ministry of this church. Uh, just a reminder that the buckets are uh, in support of our uh, noisy offering this month, which is uh, to go and help meet the needs uh, of the public schools, um, uh, to meet those needs that are funded by uh, government funds. So, uh, please, uh, stand if you're comfortable, offer yourself in song, offer yourself in God.
Even the oceans, rivers, and mountains are a part of the phase that we can just live in this time. We talked about joy a little bit during the series, but I invite us to remember a few things. That joy is really at the center of our faith, and especially at the center of living with the assurance of resurrection. Joy comes after receiving grace, the response to that. It's not a product of our present circumstances, but something deeper. It's like we say, you give me joy down deep in my soul. Joy lasts because it's a response to our relationship with Jesus. Joy transcends what we're facing right now in this moment to offer a perspective that focuses on the eternal. We're not alone. We're never alone. That's the source of our joy. Joy really is a gift to us, but joy has to find an expression in our lives. It's expressed in our attitude, in our actions, in the way that we go about living in the world as people who are forgiven and freed to love God and love others. And maybe it's like when the music comes on and you just can't help but yes, there's that feeling inside that needs to break forth. It's really pure joy. And if you were here last week or watched it online, it was clear when we danced at the end of worship. It's expressions of joy from children and adults who allowed the Spirit to move through them and then dance and praise to God. We said throughout this series that dancing is a metaphor for moving in partnership with God as people who believe in the risen Christ. We heard about the first people to join the dance right after Jesus' resurrection, and today we hear about more who follow. This time, it's Peter who understands God's love in a powerful and more inclusive way in the book of Acts. And Peter had one of those moments when he dared to break out of the ever popular mode of operation that seems to plague all of us sometimes. Maybe you've heard it, but we've always done it that way. It's always been that way. For Peter, it was really a new song that God gave him to sing, a completely new perspective about God's love and God's grace. Peter was a Jewish Christian. If you read in Acts 10, if you read his sermon, and a little more, you'll get the full story, but I'll give you the gist of it here. Peter was a Jewish Christian. Cornelius was a Roman centurion. Commander of soldiers, a Gentile who was seeking God, had a giving spirit, and was prayerful. And so Peter has these visions that he's given from God, and he preaches because he and Cornelius have these Holy Spirit led visions that lead them to one another and change the church, the body of Christ, our understanding of God's love forever. Peter's vision challenges him to see that God's grace and love really are for everyone. Now he has to hear it three times. If you read back, he gets the, the message a couple of times before he actually responds. Anybody ever been there? You can hear the message a couple of times before we really get it. So he hears God's command three times, but eventually he gets it. He understands that his assumptions about who God calls and who's included are wrong. And he has to make room for Cornelius, for the Gentiles, for anyone who's seeking God. Peter's vision is a reminder that sometimes we need to unlearn some things in order to live out God's vision. The things that we learn maybe aren't correct in terms of what it means to follow God. Peter knew the dietary laws from Leviticus, and if you ever want some light reading, take a look. It's really interesting. He knew the dietary laws, but he had to unlearn them and the religious and ethnic exclusivism that he claimed. His vision was too narrow. Rather than focusing on the laws, he learns that God focuses on two things. Fearing God in terms of attitude, not being scared, but fearing God and having an understanding of who God is and doing what's right. Doing the right thing. That's what God cares about. God doesn't care about how someone was raised or where someone comes from. God simply cares about them and welcomes them. That's the message that that God gives Peter in the vision. And isn't it like that to still be something that we need to hear? We create so many boundaries that divide us, or at least divide us from other people, and they really serve to destroy us and keep us apart. They're still there, just like they were for Peter and the others 
racism, sexism, classism, ageism, nationalism, xenophobia, homophobia, every other prejudice that we hold, those are not the way of God, but we struggle to see beyond them still. No matter how many ways we think we can think of, Define ourselves and to put a boundary around ourselves. God seeks to bring us together and challenges our assumptions every time. It still happens. Peter isn't alone in unlearning the things that we've learned, in learning that God's love is much more wide and deep than we think it is. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with flash mobs, but they have risen in popularity in recent years, especially with the advent of social media. Usually, it's a choreographed performance that takes place in a public square or something without any notice, and we see the reaction of the crowd. So, I have one to show you this morning. Uh, it's a little different than a choreographed dance, and you'll see why. Take a look.
happen to us. This five-minute performance took place in Seven Hills, Spain, in a public plaza there, and it's actually an advertisement for it's been used as an advertisement for Banco Sabadell, which is a large banking group in Spain. Now, you notice that one bass player becomes more than 100 performers from the orchestra and the opera and the choir. Players in the area performing Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which is where we get the tune for Ode to Joy, or for us, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Yes, it's choreographed, yes, it's carefully planned, but the reactions of the captures by aren't. And that's what's so compelling and why it's so powerful. Trent Gillis wrote, it's the fascination and pure joy of the passers by that makes the moment quite magical. And Pete Saunders wrote, the short performance was enough to disrupt the lives of so many people and give them something different, something so thoroughly memorable that its effects would last far beyond the five-minute performance. I can only imagine what anybody who was there that day went and told their friends. You won't believe what happened. When joy breaks forth, and I love the reaction of all the people that they show, especially the children. And you see the one who climbed the pole to get a better look, and they're starting to dump things from the pole. A few of the others mimic the conductor waving their arms in the air. One woman starts to move to the beat. A man seems awestruck by what he sees. And I surely didn't forget the experience. It was something new that changed the rhythm of their day and perhaps reminded them of the joy and power of music and community. And so I wonder how that might connect to what we're looking at today. God is always calling us to be transformed, and the account in Acts is a conversion story. Cornelius and his family and friends come to faith, but Peter is transformed too. Peter sees a vision of God's inclusive love. He proclaims that God plays no favorites. God seeks connection with everyone. All of them experience God in a powerful way and see a new thing that God is doing, a new way that God is moving, a new community that God is building. And even in five minutes, community was built in a different way in that plaza in Spain. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. We're told the Holy Spirit comforts us, comforts us. The Holy Spirit is our advocate, but also the Holy Spirit is a disruptor sometimes. And in Acts, the Spirit has a main role to break down barriers between people. God's grace is working through the Spirit, and no boundary is impassable. We're coming up on Pentecost in a couple of weeks, where we'll read from uh, Acts 2 when the Spirit came on the people in Jerusalem, but those moments continue to happen in the book of Acts. So this is one of them. It's a Pentecost kind of moment. The Spirit is poured out on Gentiles and given to Jewish Christians to see a new vision. That Jesus is Lord of all, not just of some. And we come to Christ by faith, all of us. We do not come by pedigree. No one is outside of God's grace. God rejoices when people come to faith. God rejoices when lives are transformed by grace. When our perspective changes and moves us closer to God's vision, and I would wonder how many times that's happened for us. When has our perspective changed? Because of a conversation we've had, because of a way that God has been moving in us to say, maybe there's something we need to relearn and know something new about how God is moving in the world. This meeting between Peter and Cornelius becomes a time of worship and celebration. We're told that people are baptized, and Peter stays on with the people and has some conversations. It's not always about us taking our faith to others. Sometimes we learn about our faith from others, and that's what I love about the story. It's conversion for everyone. It's transformation for everyone. We might think of our faith as something that we have chosen but if we hear those words from the gospel of God, Jesus reminds us that through him, God invites us to believe in love's power and to grow in faith. Sometimes God's invitation is an intrusion or disruption, something we didn't expect. But God reaches out, continues to reach out by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is many times not calm. The Holy Spirit sometimes 
brings some chaos and some uncertainty and some, some things that we're just not used to. By calling his disciples and his friends, Jesus calls them to us community. We're called to be a community of Jesus' friends who live out the command to love. As we talked about staying connected like the vine and branches last week, friendship with Jesus means that we're obedient to God's commands. The call to love God and love each other. Friendship with Jesus means that we bear good fruit, fruit that lasts. It's when we're friends with Jesus, when we love, when we bear good fruit, that others take notice and want to get connected to Jesus too. You saw it in that video when people start stopping and wondering what's going on here. All from a little girl putting a coin in a hat and one bass player starting something and then fiddles. And by the end, you have a group of people offering a gift and people receiving a gift that day. Last week, we talked about staying connected and helping others to get connected and stay connected. That's the message that Jesus gives. Someone wrote, we should try to be so closely united to our Lord that we, 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 we reproduce His life in our own. That our thoughts and words and actions should proclaim His teaching so that He reigns in us and lives in us. There is a challenge in that for us. That we reflect the love of God every day. And Jesus reminds us that being His friend puts us on equal footing. The body of Christ has no hierarchy. Peter says that too. They received the Holy Spirit just as we did. Each of us is important and vital to the church. Our gifts are needed. Our voices are important. And I think about that with that uh, video too. Every person has something to offer in that musical offering. Every person who watches has something to offer in terms of what they'll take away and share with others. We're Jesus' friends, not because we're special in some certain way, but because we do what he calls us to do with joy. Something that's deep down. It's the assurance that he's always with us. So where is God calling us to see a new vision and sing a new song? Where is God calling us to stop and notice a new way that God is moving, even to be interrupted and transformed? It's not new. It happens all the time as God keeps on working on us and working in us, inviting us to move and to dance, to express the joy we have in Christ, seeking to share good news of freedom and hope and justice and love. So we keep on moving. We keep on sharing the joy, helping us find expression in the ways that we live and move every day. May God help us. Thanks be to God. We do come with joy today, confident in your presence. We also come today mindful of the prayers of our hearts, the prayers of the world. And as we offer our prayers, we acknowledge both the joy and celebration for so many and the pain that so much people bear today. In the spirit of our mothers in faith, like Eve and Sarah and Leah and Naomi and Mary, Hear our prayers. We pray for those who gave birth and we celebrate. We pray for those who have lost a child and we mourn. We pray for those who are with little ones every day off plain care. We pray for those who have experienced loss or miscarriage or failed adoptions or running away or other struggles. We mourn with them. We pray for those who walk the difficult path of infertility. We seek to walk with them, and we pray for forgiveness when we say foolish things. We pray for foster moms and mentor moms and spiritual moms and mother figures, and we know how much we need them. We pray for those who have close relationships with their children, and we pray for those who have disappointment and heartache and distance with their children. We pray for those who have lost their mothers, for those who have experienced abuse from their mothers. We pray for healing. We pray for those who have lived through the testing of motherhood, for mothers of children conceived but not born. We remember them and on 
this day. We pray for those who long to be mothering their own children and warn that life is not what they want it to be. We pray for stepmothers who welcome sometimes complex paths. We pray for those who envision lavishly love on grandchildren and yet that vision is not yet to be. We pray for those who are in the midst of empty or nests. For those who have placed children up for adoption, we remember how we hold that child in your heart. We pray for those who have adopted children and seek to support them. We pray for those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising. We pray for those who carry sincere worries for their children's safety due to the, due to the reality of racism and violence and war. We pray and commit ourselves to advocate. We pray for those who have found themselves functioning differently in order to care for children or parents or other family. We pray for the unseen grief and struggles of women and mothers everywhere and for the joys as well. Thank you, God, for the love that surrounds us and for family you have offered us in Christ, family that's not bound by genetics or legalities, but we're strung together in love. Help us, O God, to remember that your love offered freely to us as a reflection of your own, an image of you that we remember, that we may remember who we are and whose we are. And we do pray, O God, that strengthened by the knowledge of your love for us, we may go into all the world and share it to care for the orphan and the refugee, to find passion to see that every child of God is sheltered, fed, and given clean water. Fill us with mercy for those who are in need of care, fill us with strength and the desire to protect all those who are vulnerable. And stir up in us the will to be instruments of peace, that all your children may grow and flourish. Hear our prayers, O God, as we pray together for prayer in the Spirit. That Jesus taught us. Holy Creator, we honor you and we honor all that you have made. Renew the whole world in the image of your love. Give us what we need for today and give us a hunger to see the whole world fed. Strengthen us for what lies ahead. Forgive our sin. Bring healing from the hurts of the past and help us to forgive those who have hurt us. Give us courage to follow your call in this moment and always. For your love is the only power, the only hope, the only honor we need in this world and the world to come. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're comfortable and then we'll sing um, as we go out from here.
Go from here, go enjoy. I mean, the love of God, the grace we know in Christ, the power.